everyone, welcome to the presentation on the MSc in Business and Hospitality offered by Shannon College of Hotel Management. Um, firstly, I would like to let you know that this presentation will be recorded for others to listen back and, and hear it um, at another date. Um, so today we're going to hear from a couple of my colleagues in the college um, who are going to cover a number of different topics. Um, so firstly, we're going to hear from Ms. Lorraine Kavanagh, who is the program leader on the business, or the Masters in Business and Hospitality in Shannon College. Uh, we're then going to hear from Ms. Tracy Hegarty, who is lecturer in Performance and Revenue Management at Shannon College. And then finally, we're going to hear from Dr. Sean Ruan, who's going to speak about strategy and innovation for hospitality. At the end of all of our speakers, we will, um, we will open the floor and take any questions um, that you may have at that time. Um, so to start, uh, we will ask um, Ms. Lorraine Kavanagh to um, give us an overview of the program and tell us a little bit about the, the different modules that you would study during the MSc in Business and Hospitality at Shannon College. So I'll pass over to you, Lorraine. Thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am the program leader for the Masters in Business and Hospitality at Shannon College of Hotel Management. At Shannon College of Hotel Management, we are actually a school of NUI Galway. We come under the College of Business, Public Policy and Law at NUI Galway. However, we're not located on the main campus, but on a satellite campus in Shannon and County Clare. So that may bring you to your first question, why choose Shannon College of Hotel Management? Well, first of all, at Shannon College of Hotel Management, we have almost 70 years in uh, teaching business and hospitality. We were founded in 1951 by Dr. Brendan Regan, a man who had great innovation and passion for tourism and hospitality in Ireland. In fact, he established the world's first duty-free at Shannon Airport. We also have in-house expertise, all our staff are highly qualified, with many coming back from industry, and they're able to bring the experience and the knowledge that they earn, earned on, on their um, work in the hospitality industry into the classroom. We also have partnerships with industry. Our year two and final year students on our undergraduate programs complete placements every year with different hotel groups around the world. We work with hotel groups like the Ritz-Carlton, Mandarin Oriental, Red Carnation, to name just a few. And our placement officer, Elaine Giltonen, is always more than happy to take CVs from our master's students and pass them along to the hotels she works with. We also have a very strong alumni network at Shannon College. Our network has been developing for, for, for many years. We have many chapters around the world in cities like New York, London, Shanghai, and these chapters arrange regular social events and they're great opportunities for our alumni to come together, meet, share ideas, opportunities, and really just to get to know each other a little bit better. We also have a great student community at Shannon College. While we are small in numbers, it allows our students to foster better relationships with each other. We have a lot of committees like the charity committee, which is always arranging regular social events, again, presenting students with more opportunities to meet and socialize together. We also have a lot of support structures in place to help students. For example, we have a writing service available in the library. So for any student who feels they need help with academic writing, they're more than welcome to avail of the service. We have counseling services available to students. We have a social, uh, sorry, a student um, welfare officer available five days a week on campus. And we also have an independent counselor who travels to campus one day a week, and he's also available on Zoom. Um, we also have our own student liaison officer, April, who is always trying to come up with new ideas to keep student engagement and to get students involved in lots of different activities at the college. So who's the program for? Our program is suitable for anyone who has qualifications and experience in hospitality and business. And the purpose of our program is really to help people bring their knowledge and skills to the next level by teaching them about current trends and future trends that are coming up in the hospitality industry. Just to give you a very quick overview of our program, our masters at the end, you will exit with a level nine qualification from NUI Galway. On the program, we try to offer a mixture of subjects which target industry needs. We also have flexibility built into our program. Our classes are blocked into two days, Mondays and Tuesdays, 
And this allows you time, if you like, to have a part-time job, but also to meet the requirements that are expected of you during the master's program. Our classes are small. This allows for a higher engagement between students and teachers, and it also gives the lecturers more opportunity to give you more personalized and individual feedback. And we also value industry exposure. We organize field trips, guest speakers, and at the end, you finish your degree, uh, sorry, your, your master's degree with a business consultancy project, which you do in um, connect, which you do with another um, industry partner. This is the structure of our program. As you can see, it's divided across three semesters. In the first semester, you complete four modules, same in the second semester. And then we have our summer school. Our summer school is arranged slightly differently. You have one week around in May or June where you complete three modules of your choosing. And then you finish off by completing a business consultancy project. Our academic year for 21-22, orientation begins at the end of August, beginning of September. We then have semester one, which starts on the 6th of December and runs until the 23rd of November. Semester two starts on the 10th of January and finishes at the end of March. And then the summer school will be in May and June. We will confirm dates in the second semester for when this will happen. And then you have your business consultancy project, which runs from July to mid-August. Entry requirements. Uh, we require all our applicants to have a second class honours degree or higher in a related area. We also have an interview as part of our process. We would like you to have relevant experience as this allows you to bring your own insights into the classroom and, and allows you to participate in classroom discussions. And we also like to see that our applicants have a passion for industry and education. And this comes across in the personal statement, which you will upload when you apply for us and also in the interview. And finally, for any international students watching today, we do have a language requirement of an IELTS of 6.5 with no band lower than 5.5. Our fees and scholarships for EU students, our fees are 9,000 euro and for non-EU 15,500. NUI Galway also have some scholarship schemes which you can apply for. So it's worth your while taking a look at the website to see, is there any scholarship that you can apply for? Applications are now open um, for September, 2021. If you'd like to register with us, please go to the website that you can see here on the screen. You can also find it quite easily on NUI Galway's main website. You'll need to set up an account um, there is a small admin fee of 35 euro and it's non-refundable, I'm afraid. Um, if you're interested in our program and you would like to do it full-time, our course codes are MBH1 for full-time and MBH2 for part-time. Once you complete your application, we will be notified and then we will be in contact with you to arrange an interview. The interview really takes no more than 20 minutes and it's online, so there is no need to worry about having to travel to campus for, for the interview. For further information, you can visit our website or you can contact me, the program leader. Thank you very much for listening. And I'd now like to pass you to my colleague, Tracy Hegarty. Thanks, Lorraine. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tracy Hegarty and I co-lecture one of the modules, Performance and Revenue Management. So I will just... Okay, so performance and revenue management, it's a, it's a core skill that's worth 10 ECTS credits in the first semester, and we're actually in the middle of teaching it um, to this year's class at the moment. And the objective of this module is to develop skills necessary to appraise financial and non-financial performance in a hospitality organization, along with the ability to devise revenue management strategies to improve an organization's performance. Um, I suppose, in effect, the modules link together two very important subject um, areas which go hand in hand in any hospitality business setting. So with those two module leaders, um, there's my colleague Adrian Silver and myself, Tracy Hegarty. And to introduce and give a bit of background about both of us, Adrian is Deputy Head of College, Head of Studies here in Shannon, and he's also a lecturer in Accounting and Finance. And Adrian joined us in Shannon College in 2006. And since he joined us, his lecturing has been in specialized financial accounting, management accounting and business finance to both the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. And prior to Adrian joining us in Shannon, um, he lectured at undergraduate, postgraduate and professional accounting level in Dublin Business School. So he brings a very strong um, background 
in the whole area of finance. And myself, I'm a graduate of Shannon College and I joined way back in 1996 and I lecture in revenue management, rooms division and information technology. So in addition to lecturing, I manage the alumni database and the communications to our graduates. And I continue to engage with alumni and industry partners, both lo locally and internationally, trying to keep abreast of how it's changing, the developments in my specialist areas, because obviously, um, I suppose, the rooms division and revenue management and IT has continuously changed and no more so than in the past current year. So keeping up to date with, with how the industry is, is dealing with all of the changes. My alumni and industry contacts then tend to be invaluable when organizing guest speakers, as Lorraine mentioned, kind of site visits and field trips and mentors for the individual subjects as well. So as part of the, the performance management side of the course, you'll study, firstly, the performance information needed for different um, users. So for businesses having to make presentations to banks or to shareholders, um, in addition to just within the properties themselves. So performance information needs. Industry-wide and organization-specific KPIs, the key performance indicators that are used across the industry, in how to interpret business accounts, um, application of performance management models, and I suppose all importantly in current times as cost reduction strategies. Then my own topic, revenue management, you will study the concepts of revenue management. And, and we're very conscious that a lot of times the master's students mightn't have a strong background in revenue management. So you are introduced to it from the ground up, but there is quite a steep learning curve because then we move on to looking at how it impacts on business performance and the development of revenue strat strategies to improve performance. And then the whole area of revenue management is approached from, I suppose, the viewpoint of the revenue manager how to manage this whole complex activity, understanding the importance of it being systematic. And we, I suppose, use an awful lot of real life industry examples for that also. And then in addition to studying our module, you'll get external um, certification in hotel industry analytics, which we abbreviate as CHIA, C-H-I-A. And this CHIA certification is in conjunction with STR Global and the American Hotel and Lodging Educational Institute. Um, all of our students are offered a master class with STR um, and I suppose quite importantly for our international students is that the CHIA certification is internationally recognized. Um, it's targeted mainly at general managers, revenue managers, sales managers, corporate staff. So getting this uh, certification as part of your qualifications will help you stand out amongst industry peers and quite often opens the doors for future career opportunities because uh, employers can see that you can read these these reports that you understand the importance of KPIs and metrics and being able to, I suppose, understand comp sets and, and deal with all of that. So how do we assess it? You'll have projects um, and assignments with us. So you'll have your T examination accounts for um, a, a part of your, your grades. You'll also have a site visit where you'll have to report on specific metrics and processes. And this year and last year, we've been lucky enough to visit the Woodlands House Hotel in Adair in County Limerick. And on both occasions, our students would have spent time with the general manager, David Fitzgerald, and the sales and marketing director, Elena Fitzgerald. Uh, David would have focused on performance management, cost reduction strategies, and Elena would have focused on the revenue side. And I suppose having come from studying STR, which is big business, it's very, very good for students to understand how all of these processes operate in an independent family run property as well. Then at the end of term, uh, students will have an essay incorporating academic research, practical presentation, and they'll have to do a presentation, practical application, excuse me, and a presentation also. So the aim of both of these assignments is developing academic writing skills, in addition to aiding, them, aiding our students to link both what they're going to learn in the theory side of the classroom, as well as what's happening in real life. And as Lorraine would have also mentioned, we have very strong industry links. So we have exceptionally strong links with the hotel industry and we regularly have guest speakers. So as a, a current example, yesterday we had Una Kremens, who is the president of the Irish hospitality industry and founder of the Innovate Room. And she gave a 90 minute masterclass to our students. And she focused on how hotels are dealing with the new normal because everything has changed utterly for businesses over the past year how hotels are dealing with um, creating demand and I suppose an awful lot of the old rule books are out the window so they would have been very well equipped 
in what hotels now need to do um, moving on to 2021. Next week, then, our students will attend the Irish Hotel Sector Insights and 2021 Outlook in conjunction with Bank of Ireland Hospitality Division. So again, letting them network and see what is happening in the real world out there. So I suppose we would like to think that by completing our module, um, that you're future proofing your CV. Uh, the business world, I suppose, is dealing with the, I suppose, devastation that the pandemic has wrought and skills such as those that we'll be teaching you in performance and revenue management will be vital in any industry but I suppose we focus on business and hospitality but really um, I suppose generating revenue and cost cutting and performance management is, is a key business, business tool and our students will have the analytic skills required for the key decision making and the confidence in how to use them and I suppose that is, is where we're coming from with the module that we cover both Adrian and I. So thank you very much. I'll hand you over now to Sean. Thank you very much, Tracy. And that segues very nicely into my module, which let me hopefully share the slides with you. And innovation for hospitality um, in the context of the revenue management and yield management and understanding costs and when able to manage a business is very much uh, embeds in very well with the whole idea of strategy and innovation. Um, so in this module, you're going to learn basically how to devise strategy and how to be innovative and how to react to the trends that are uh, currently happening in the marketplace. As Tracy has just said, the whole world of hospitality and business in general has changed um, dramatically in the last nine months in response to the pandemic. And as the saying goes, you should never waste a crisis. So it is giving businesses an opportunity to think outside the box, to reinvent themselves, and certainly uh, requires a huge amount of innovation. And for some reason, my slides are moving forward. Hold on. Perfect. And if you could move on to the next one there, Sarah, please. So the co focus of this course is, as I said, to be able to, to, to think strategically and react to changes in the competitive environment. And that's never more so needed than it is at the moment, uh, where we've seen the hospitality and tourism industry uh, around the world severely hit by the pandemic and the closures that have ensued. Um, and it has brought a huge amount of creativity and innovation across the hospitality and tourism platform right around the world in terms of reinventing the business. And being able to do that means that you have to be able to craft, craft the right strategy in response to whatever's happening in the business environment. And is your ability to do that is the linchpin to having a successful hospitality operation. A little bit about myself. I have been in the industry for longer than I care to remember. My original trajectory was training as a chef. Uh, moving then into the role of being a, a pastry chef and then later in the last 20 years moved into education when I became part of the staff in Shannon College here. I have a master's in hospitality management and a PhD in tourism and my uh, subject areas are management strategy and tourism here on our undergrad programs and then strategy and innovation on the master's program which is what we're talking about today. Um, so the, the module that I teach brings together the theory of strategy, but then we also get to operate an, uh, a simulated model known as Hotel Sim. This was devised by a past vice president of the Marriott Group, who in the twilight years of his career decided he wanted to be philanthropic and give back to the industry. So he developed his own virtual hotel that he has been used extensively by Marriott to train cluster managers. And in fact, if you want to get promoted within the Marriott brand, you have to go through this simulated training um, to as part of the, the assessment uh, procedures. So it gives you an opportunity to, to bring uh, to bear all the theory that you've learned with Ms. Hegarty and Mr. Silver in performance management and yield management and revenue management and apply that in a practical setting to running a virtual hotel. Um, so it's quite challenging. You're always in a comp set with a number of other groups from within the student body of your masters. Um, it gets quite competitive amongst all the groups, uh, but it's also good fun because it allows you to make all the mistakes in a virtual safe environment, including running your hotel off a cliff financially, if that's the way things go, and fine tune your skills before launching onto the real world where that mightn't translate as well if you don't perform well financially. Um, so on completion of the course, you have the necessary tactical skills to outmaneuver the competition and to lock in sustained competitive advantage. So we talk about in the module, we start off with an introduction to strategy first and foremost. Then we will look at strategy at the business level, focus a lot on strategy at the corporate level, at which point we start talking about corporate culture and its importance to having successful outcomes. 
because as I described, it's the glue that holds the corporation together. So if your culture is not performing to good effect, it's very hard to have a successful strategy. And then we move on in to talking about uh, benchmarking and different ways that uh, uh, businesses and hospitality and tourism enterprises can internationalize their business in the global environment and end up then with running the actual virtual um, hotel. So there are two assessments for this module. One is an individual one, which allows you to do a corporate review, strategic corporate review on a company of your choice. I always position this from the point of view when it's finished, it could be a talking point for an interview. So if you're doing it in a company that you would like to work with, that could be something that would be the starting point of you engaging with that company and hopefully maybe getting forward, going forward to interview and successfully being hired by them. And then the second assessment is the group assessment whereby you, along with your team members, you are running the, the virtual hotel. And at the end of it, the learning and the marks are not for who wins the prize of winning, the, having the best run hotel. It's about the students and the team that really understood what went well in their simulation over the course of the 12 months that you've tra traded, but more importantly, what didn't go well and why, and what would you do differently in the future? In other words, what have you learned? So if we could move to the next slide, Sarah, please. So the course is designed for middle to upper level hospitality managers who are seeking to hone their strategic decision-making skills. Uh, if you're coming from a non-hospitality background, similar to what uh, Tracy said, the skills you will get on the master's program uh, are translatable across any area of business, not just hospitality and tourism. Um, and if you have not got that level of understanding of hospitality coming into the program, it is certainly something you're going to acquire uh, throughout the program, but then you will end up with skills that are translatable across business in general and not just in hospitality and tourism. And if we could move on again, Sarah, there, please. So on completion of the course, you'll be able to take decisive action when faced with situations that require a decision, because sometimes that is what causes companies to fail, is the inability of management and senior management in particular to make decisions. You're going to be able to critically assess pertinent information related to the decisions that you want to make based on the setting and the context. Again, fitting in a little bit with what Tracy spoke about earlier. So they will give you the, the necessary data and they'll teach you how to interpret that, interpret that data. And out of that then, by moving it to my module, you'll be able to build a sound strategy to move the business forward. You will have an increased awareness of your own decision-making behavior. And that's something that's very important to have self-awareness in terms of how you impact on the business. And more importantly, how your uh, philosophical background and understandings might inform or underline or impact on your decisions uh, that you're going to be asked to make. And then lastly, you'll be able to benchmark decisions against the set goals and the targets. So the key circle of strategy, because it is very much a circular uh, process, is the review. So you set out the goals, you set out the strategy to achieve the goals, but throughout the process, you have to be constantly reviewing and seeing, are you heading in the right direction? Um, and certainly in the context of the current climate in the business world right now, flexibility is the key. So being able to adapt very, very quickly and pivot to different types of scenarios uh, is what is giving some companies the, the, that sustained competitive advantage. So the more flexible, the more nimble the companies are at the moment, the better they are able to cope with what the world of business is, is challenging them with right now. So if we move on to the next slide, I think that could be the last one. Yes, so at this point, I'll hand you back to Sarah. So thank you very much for your attention and we will be answering any questions you might have. Thank you, Sarah. That's great. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, so um, we are happy to open the floor now to any questions that um, anyone may have. Um, and if there are no questions, um, please do feel free to get in contact with um, either Lorraine, uh, the program leader, or myself. If you do have any questions, um, you'll find both of our contact details on um, the Shannon College website. Um, we're very happy to take questions on, on the programs. So thank you so much to, um, to Lorraine, to Tracy and to Sean for joining us today and to giving such great insight into the program and, and then also into the specific modules that they're teaching. Um, I hope that you, you found it useful and that uh, you will get in touch with any questions. Thank you so much.